السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس آئی ہوپ یو آل آر ویری ویل ٹوڈے وی ول اسٹڈی یونٹ نمبر تھرٹین دا ویپنگ پرنسز ٹو آف آکسفرڈ ماڈرن انگلش فار کلاس فور دس لیسن از دی سیکنڈ پارٹ آف اور پریویس چیپٹر وچ واز دا ویپنگ پرنسز ون ان دا پریویس چیپٹر وی اسٹڈی دیٹ انکل مائک گیو اے کلیکشن آف اسٹیمپس ٹو آسم اینڈ ہی ٹول ہم دا اسٹوری آف اے اسٹیمپ آف دا ویپنگ پرنسز سو لیٹس ریڈ دا پارٹ ٹو اینڈ سی واٹس نیو ان اٹ First of all come towards words to know. The first word here is damaged. Damaged, harmed or spoiled. Damaged means hurt or injured. The second word is faded. Become grey, dull and discoloured. Faded means to become less bright. Third word is magnifying glass. A lens in a frame with a handle used to make objects viewed through it appear larger. A magnifying glass is a convex lens that is used to produce a magnified image of an object. It shows a zoomed image of things. This is a magnifying glass. The last word is soak. Soak to make something or somebody completely wet. Let's start reading our lesson. Asim ran straight up to his room. He was very excited. He opened the metal box and emptied the stamps onto the floor. With the album beside him, Asim began to sort out all the stamps. It was raining hard. Asim heard the front door bang and jumped up to look out of the window. He saw Uncle Mike running towards his car. As he drove away, he looked up and waved. Asim smiled and waved back. Emptied means containing nothing. Sort out means to put things in a particular order. Bang means to knock or hit. Asim was very excited to open the box which Uncle Mike had given him. He opened it and emptied it on the floor. He started putting them all in order. Asim saw Uncle Mike going and they both waved and smiled at each other. Asim returned to his stamps. There were all kinds of stamps, big ones, small ones, stamps with postmarks and some without. There were stamps with pictures of people's faces and some of birds and animals. There were stamps from England, Japan, Malaysia, China, USA and many other countries. There were some stamps from countries that Asim had never even heard of. But he was not looking very carefully at the stamps because all he could think of was the weeping princess. A postmark is a mark placed over a stamp on a piece of mail that shows when the mail was sent and where it was sent to. Like this, this is a postmark. When Asim opened the box, he found different kinds of stamps in it. Some were big, some were small, some had postmarks and some had pictures on them. There were stamps from countries like England, Japan, China and USA. He was looking at all of them very carefully as he was thinking about the stamp of Weeping Princess. When he had sorted the stamps into small piles on the floor, he got some envelopes. On each envelope, he neatly wrote the name of a country and then put the stamps of that country into it. The ones he didn't know, he put in a large brown envelope. On it, he wrote, Ask Uncle Mike. At lunchtime, his father asked, How did you get on with your stamps this morning? Did you find any interesting ones? Oh yes, replied Asim. There are lots of very interesting stamps in the box but no weeping princess. I'm going to look at the album after lunch. There are lots of old envelopes at the back of the album. They have stamps on them. Piles mean a great number or quantity of something. When Asim arranged all the stamps, he got some covers or envelopes for them. He wrote the name of each country... on the envelope and put the stamp of that country in it when his father asked him about the stamps he told him that he is looking for the stamp of weeping princess and he has not found it yet he will check for it in the album too you will have to be careful when you take them off the envelopes said asim's father don't pull them off but leave them to soak in some water then they will come off easily and won't be damaged After lunch, Asim went back to his room. The rain had stopped but he did not feel like playing football. Anyway, the ground would be very wet because the shower had been quite heavy. Damaged means destroyed. Asim's father told him not to damage the stamps. He told him not to pull them off but to get them soaked in water. 
In this way, they will come off easily and won't be damaged. Asim picked up the album and turned the pages slowly. Some of the pages were loose because the album was very old. On each page, there were about nine or ten stamps. Some pages had only two or three stamps on them. Asim soon found out that this was because they were arranged in sets. On each page at the bottom, in very neat writing, there was something written about the stamps. He wondered how long Uncle Mike had taken to collect so many stamps. When he had finished looking at the album, he took out the envelopes that were at the back. Most of them were old and faded. The addresses written in ink were very pale. Asim could only just read what they said. He could see that the envelopes were addressed to Mas- Master Michael Davidson. He wondered who he was. Arranged means to organize things. Pale means light in color. Wanted means to think about something with curiosity. Bottom is the lowest part of something. Then, after this, Asim opened the album. It was very old. There were about nine to ten stamps on each page of it. At the bottom of each page, something was written about the stamps in very neat writing. After this, he looked at the envelopes and looked at the addresses on them. One envelope was addressed to Miss Master Michael Davidson, and he was thinking who this man was. Many of the envelopes had Canadian stamps on them. Asim tried to read the postmarks. He suddenly had a brilliant idea. He went to his shelf and picked up the magnifying glass that his father had given him for his birthday. Now I will be able to see the stamps, the addresses, and the postmarks quite clearly," he said to himself. He held up an envelope and looked through the magnifying glass. Toronto, he read. That must be a Canadian village or town. Brilliant means extremely intelligent. As the album of the Uncle Mike was very old, Asin could not see the addresses on it. He thought of using the magnifying glass that his father has given to him. In this way, he will see the addresses clearly. He looked at one envelope and it had the address of Canada. Asim read Toronto and he thought that it must be a Canadian village or a town. He opened the envelope and found a letter in it. He took the letter out and just as he was going to start reading it, he remembered that his parents had once said to him, "Don't read other people's letters." He put the letter aside. There were letters in some of the other envelopes too, but Asim did not read those. He made a pile of letters on the floor and decided that he would give them to Uncle Mike when he saw him again. A side means to one side. When Asim opened the envelope, he found a letter in it. He was going to start reading it, but then he remembered that his parents told him not to read other people's letters. So he decided to give all the letters back to Uncle Mike. As Asim pulled out another letter, a few stamps fell onto the floor. He picked them up and looked at them. Suddenly, he leaped into the air, shouting, "The Weeping Princess!" He looked carefully at the stamp in his hand and then looked at it again with the magnifying glass. Just then, the door opened and his mother came into the room. Asim, she said, "Are you all right?" I heard you shouting. Leaped means to jump or move quickly. Asim picked up another letter and a few stamps fell onto the floor. He looked at them carefully and then he shouted, "The Weeping Princess!" Now he has found the stamp of the Weeping Princess from Uncle Mike's album, which Uncle Mike was thinking that he did not have. Asim's mother came and asked him what happened. "Look, mother," said Asim, "I think I have found the Weeping Princess." His mother examined the stamp and said, "I think you may be right. Perhaps Uncle Mike will be able to tell you." Asim raced out of the room, holding on to the stamp tightly. "What's the matter?" asked father, as he came stumbling down the stairs. Asim did not stop, but shouted as he went past, "I have found the princess!" He ran straight out of the front door and down the road. His father shouted after him, "Don't drop her!" and went back to reading the sunday paper examine means to look at something carefully perhaps means possibly but not certainly stumbling means to walk in an awkward way 
Asim then told her that he has found the stamp of the weeping princess. His mother was not very sure about it. She said, "Uncle Mike will tell you about it." Asim ran and went out of the house in excitement. Half an hour later, Asim and Uncle Mike arrived at the house in the old Austin. Asim was so excited that he did not wait. He ran into the house and told his father, "It is the weeping princess, at least." Uncle Mike thinks it is. There is a tear on her cheek. His father laughed. Now just slow down. If Uncle Mike thinks it is the weeping princess, I'm sure he's right. When Uncle Mike came into the room, everyone was smiling. After half an hour, Asim came with Uncle Mike. He was very excited and he told his father that it is the weeping princess and Uncle Mike also thinks the same. Uncle Mike said, "I have had this stamp for all these years and I never knew. Now that I have given the album to Asim, it belongs to him. I think that he should keep this stamp and I hope he finds many more rare stamps." Asim was overjoyed. He stood there with a big smile on his face. With one hand he held on to his mother and in the other he held a white envelope. In it was the weeping princess. Uncle Mike said that he had the stamp with him for many years but he was not knowing about it but now it belongs to Asim he hoped that Asim will find many more rare stamps like this Asim was very happy and he was holding the stamp of weeping princess in his hand now come towards exercise of this chapter question number 2 answer the questions about these lines from the story don't pull them off but leave them to soak in some water then they will come off easily and won't be damaged so here are lines given you have to answer the questions given below keeping in mind these lines these lines are related to asim and his father they call it when we read that asim's father told him not to damage the stamps he told him to soak them in water and they will come off easily in this way our first question is who was giving this advice and to whom the answer is asim's father was giving this advice to asim b is why was the speaker giving this advice as we read that the stamps were stuck on the envelopes and if they were not treated with care they would be damaged so this is the reason that asim's father was giving advice to be very careful c what happened after this After this Asim went back to his room and went through the pages of the album come towards part b working with words number 1 find words in the passage which have the same meaning as following a is a small paper packet in which letters are put a small paper packet in which letters are put is called an envelope b is something that makes objects appear large a magnifying glass is something that makes objects appear large C is crying crying means weeping D with great attention and care something done with great attention and care is done carefully so the answer for D is carefully E a small printed label put on envelopes to show that postage has been paid a small printed label put on envelopes to show that postage has been paid is called a stamp F looked at very carefully Looked at very carefully means examined. G, one of two parts that a whole is divided into. If we divide anything into two parts, that is called half. H, not common or ordinary, is something not common or ordinary is called rare. I, very quickly, very quickly raised. J, a heap, a heap means a pile. Now come towards part C learning about language. This is about tenses. Number 1, what is the tense of each of the following sentences? Here are the sentences from different tenses. You have to recognize which sentence belongs to which tense. A, the man is sitting on a chair. This is a sentence of present continuous tense as the action is continuous and is in present. and in the present continuous tense we use ing form of the verb and verbs is am or or here the verb is is and 
sitting ing form of the verb is used so this is a sentence of present continuous tense b is michael and moise went to england last year this is a sentence of simple past tense or past indefinite tense as we use second form of the verb in simple past tense and the action represented in this tense is also in the past c she sleeps for an hour after lunch this is a sentence of simple present tense as we add s or es with verbs in singular in simple present tense and it is also showing the habit b bina was talking about the books this is a sentence of past continuous tense as the action represented in this sentence was in the past and was continuous at a time the verbs in past continuous tense are was and were and we use ing form of the verb the verb here is was and talking the ing form of the verb so this is a sentence of past continuous tense e yesterday maria typed 15 pages This is a sentence of simple past tense as we use second form of the verb in it and the action is in the past. F he is eating a yellow banana. This is a sentence of present continuous tense. G the children were playing under a banyan tree. This is a sentence of past continuous tense. H Rahim plays cricket very well. This is a sentence of simple present tense. Now come towards next part which is about transitive and intransitive verbs. Let me tell you first what a verb is. A verb is an action word. Any action or work done is called a verb like playing, writing, jumping, sleeping etc. A verb can be transitive or intransitive. A transitive verb is a verb that demands an object. A sentence has three main parts: subject, verb and an object the object of a sentence is the person or thing that receives the action of the verb a transitive verb is a verb that demands an object some object is necessary for a transitive verb a sentence will not seem complete if there is no object after a transitive verb for example please bring coffee in this sentence bring is a transitive verb as it demands an object after it and coffee here is an object the sentence will be incomplete if we remove coffee so the object is necessary for a transitive verb an intransitive verb is the opposite of a transitive verb it does not require an object to complete it like they jumped she sang here jumped and sang are in transitive verbs number 2 here is which of the following verbs are transitive a she makes delicious cakes this is a transitive verb and cakes is the object in this tense b is the children played well here the verb played is intransitive c is my aunt showed the house to her neighbors the verb showed is transitive and demands an object after it and here in this sentence object is house d he drove the bus into a tree in this sentence the verb drove is transitive and the bus is object in this sentence e the pencil broke into small pieces the verb broke in this sentence is intransitive f the boy broke the pencil In this sentence the verb broke is transitive as the object in this sentence is pencil. G our school team played cricket yesterday. In this sentence the verb played is transitive as the object in this sentence is cricket. With this our lesson comes to an end. Stay blessed. Allah fail.